This trait prompted researchers to wonder what body element attracted the jewelry's attention the most, and this might help keep the bond strong between the dominant pair. There are a number of different colour morphs of each species of Judochromus. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're finally going to be looking at my in-depth species profile on Judochromus regani. That said, if you are looking at breeding other Judochromus species, this video still might be informative for you. Anyway guys, on to the video. Gelidochromus regani is a cichlid that is endemic to Lake Tanganyika in Africa and it is one of the more common Tanganyikan cichlids found in the aquarium hobby. Gelidochromus regani is sometimes referred to as the convict julie or striped julie and are part of the Gelidochromus genus or julies. This genus comprises of many different species of dwarf cichlid that include Malariae, Ornatus, Thickfeldii and Transcriptus, just to name a few. All julies also have a somewhat unique swimming ability where they are able to swim upside down and also in reverse, being able to seemingly cling to rock structures like a rock climber clinging to an overhang. They are also able to do this sort of flip where they can spin their body around from an upside down position to upright with seemingly minimal effort. There are a number of different colour morphs of each species of Judochromus, depending on where they are geographically located in the lake. Some of these colour morphs do look very similar and some are very difficult to tell apart. It goes without saying that it is highly likely that hybridisation occurred in the lake, as some of the different types of julies look very similar. For instance, some types of Regani bear a striking resemblance to Malaria and Transcriptus. Now I thought I should talk about the Judochromus genus a little first before talking specifically about Regani, as there has been some interesting studies done on them. As with all cichlids, Judochromus are surprisingly intelligent. Apart from their strong instinct of parental care, Research published in New Scientist showed that Judochromus transcriptus were able to recognise faces, including the faces of their human owners. While still amazing for a small fish to have that ability, fish recognising their human owners isn't surprising, and as crazy as it sounds, I believe many of my fish recognise me when I walk into the fish room. This is because when I walk in there with other people, their behaviour is noticeably different with them tending to hide more. However, researchers realised that because Julies mainly live in between rock crevices, only part of their body is visible at any time. This trait prompted researchers to wonder what body element attracted the Julie's attention the most. In their tests, researchers discovered that transcriptors were able to identify friend versus foe by looking specifically at the patterns or markings around the eyes of the fish rather than the body shape or fins. To test this, the researchers isolated eight adult males that were familiar with each other. These eight males were then exposed to digital models of other transcriptors with the combination of both familiar and unfamiliar features on their faces and bodies. The researchers found that the eight adult males were specifically guarded against only the unfamiliar face models, regardless of whatever body type they were shown. The males spent more time following the unfamiliar faces as the models moved around the tank, a sign that they were monitoring a potential threat, thus using their ability to distinguish unique facial patterns, regardless of whatever body shape they were presented with. I think it is quite interesting that transcriptors possess this ability. However, I believe that while the study was only done on transcriptors, that this trait extends to other species in the Judochromus genus. While the study showed that body shape did not play a role in identifying friend versus foe, I believe body size does play a role in determining a mate with Judochromus, as well as extending to other species of cichlids, such as Altolampologus. The example I have seen that displays this characteristic is with my very own Judochromus transcriptus. I started with four in a tank and a pair quickly formed between the largest, most dominant fish and a smaller transcriptus. This pair would boss the other two fish around the tank for months, almost a year. However, they never spawn in all that time, but recently something strange happened. The larger, dominant fish of the pair switched partners for the smallest transcriptus in the tank. During the past year, its previous partner had grown to be almost the same size as it, and I think, although I'm not 100% sure, the transcriptus used size to identify the sex of a potential mate, hence the larger, dominant fish deciding now to pair up with the smallest transcriptus in the tank. It might be that its previous partner had grown so large that the dominant fish now sees it as the same sex as itself. To add further weight to this theory is the fact that the initial pair never spawned once in that entire time. A similar thing happened with my black alto lamprologus calvus. When I first bought the adult pair, the sizes of the two fish were different, with one larger than the other. The two behaved just like you would expect a bonded pair to behave, always swimming near each other with the larger fish defending their territory. This continued for months until, again, the smaller fish of the pair grew to be the same size as the initially larger fish. During that time, the pair looked as though they had a good bond. However, again, they never spawned, 
And now that they are the same size as each other, they constantly fight. But obviously what I just explained isn't a scientific study, but it's something I have observed now with two different species of fish. However, today we're specifically looking at Judochromus regani. It's one of the more widely distributed julies throughout Lake Tanganyika and is the largest growing of all the julies in the genus, with some species reportedly growing to 30 centimetres in the wild. That's one foot. However, in the aquarium hobby, usually the maximum size is about half of that at 15 centimetres. But they will spawn well below their max size, and mine began spawning when they were about 6 to 7 centimetres in length. For a breeding pair, I will not go below a 100 litre aquarium, and I have mine housed in a 2 foot long by 2 foot wide by 14 inch deep tank. These guys prefer a wide tank footprint rather than a tall deep tank, as they prefer to hug the rock work rather than swim in the mid or open water. Dudochromus regani is a great fish for beginners wanting to try Tanganyika cichlids and are easy to care for. The aquarium should be decorated with numerous rock piles for them to seek refuge in, along with fine substrates such as finely crushed coral or pool filter sand to allow them to dig. Providing these fish with both caves and sand will ensure they exhibit their natural behaviour in your aquarium. They will also take the terracotta pots cut in half, however I prefer a more natural look in the aquarium. Although, these can be hidden with clever rock placement like my cousin Adam has done with his breeding pair. These guys do well in the Tanganyikan community aquarium and can be housed with open water fish such as Cyprochromus and Ventralis type of fish. While you can keep them with other rock dwelling cichlids such as Lamprologus or Neolamprologus, it is best to avoid stressing the fish out as they will compete for their territories amongst the rocks. Despite Rugani being the largest Judochromus species, they are said to be the least aggressive amongst the genus. However, if you intend to breed them, it is best to keep them in the species only aquarium. That said, I do have a breeding pair sporting in this 4 foot tank and some but not all the fry do survive, but you will have better success in a species only tank. Like all fish from Lake Tanganyika, these guys prefer hard alkaline water with a DKH of above 10 and a pH of at least above 7.5. The temperature should also be approximately 25 to 26 degrees Celsius. And like I say in all my in-depth species profiles, Weekly, 25% water changes are best for cichlids from Lake Tanganyika. These guys are omnivores, meaning that they eat both animal and plant matter, and will pick at algae, however, obviously nowhere near as much as mabuna or bristlenose catfish. In the wild, they are known to eat invertebrates as well as freshwater sponges. However, in the aquarium, it's best to give them a highly varied diet of both high quality pellet or flake food in combination with frozen and live foods such as brine shrimp, daphnia, mysa shrimp, etc. Sixing these guys isn't easy when they are juveniles, but you're best to start off with a small group of them, say a group of at least four, and let them grow up and pair off together. And this is how I started with my two breeding pairs, although Adam gave me six fish to begin with. There's also no guarantee that buying a breeding pair will give you successful spawns, as the bond between Regani can break if they are disrupted too much. So again, it's best to buy a young group of them and let them pair off together. Eventually a pair will form and these two fish will then dominate the aquarium keeping all the other Rigani away from their territory. It is around this stage when you should be able to identify the sex of the fish with your pair, and sexing them is actually another interesting thing about these fish. Generally in the cichlid world, males are more often than not larger than their female counterparts. However, this isn't the case with Judochromus Rigani. The larger fish in your pair of Rigani will actually be the female, with the male being significantly smaller. Female Rigani will dominate their male partner, and if the bond between the two breaks, then the female can sometimes kill the male. In fact, female Regani are so dominant that they can sometimes dominate males that are even larger than herself. Judochromus Regani are fairly easy fish to breed and usually only form monogamous pairs. However, there are instances where females will mate with multiple males if the aquarium is large enough, but I believe this is rare. When a pair forms, they will generally dig around their chosen cave and defend their territory from any fish coming too close. Being a secretive fish in for their first spawn, you probably won't realise that they have indeed spawned until you see free swimming fry. If your pair are small, say around the 5-6cm to six centimeter size, then the brood size will also be small, for example, maybe just one fry. But as your pair matures, the brood size will increase. Also, with some young pairs, it may take them a few attempts at spawning as they can sometimes eat their own fry. However, I've been lucky with my pairs and have never seen that behaviour from Regani. Now what I'm about to say isn't always a required step in bringing Regani, and it is actually kind of counterintuitive considering that other Regani might eat the fry. However, due to the aggression of some females during spawning, it is sometimes recommended to keep some of the subordinate Regani in the tank with the dominant pair. This is because of the instinct the dominant pair have to protect their fry, 
it is so strong that the dominant pair may actually end up fighting each other and thus breaking their bond. However, if you do keep some subordinate regarding in the aquarium with the dominant pair, then this might help keep the bond strong between the dominant pair as all their effort and time is spent protecting their fry from the other subordinate regarding rather than each other. Again, this isn't always required, but may help you depending on the pair you have and the strength of their bond. Depending on their size, Regani are said to be able to lay up to 300 eggs in a single spawn. That amount, however, would be from a very large female. Adam's female Regani is approximately 10 centimetres in size, and they have approximately 150 fry per spawn. Mine are 6 to 8 centimetres long, and are now having approximately 20 or so fry per spawn, every 4 to 6 weeks. I am hopeful that as mine continue to grow, that their brood size will really take off, but so far it hasn't. They usually do not tolerate the other generations of fry near their most recent spawn, and you will see the adult pair's behaviour change when they have a new spawn. They will chase older fry away from their spawning site when they have a new brood, but I have noticed that these brood sites are smaller and when I remove all the older fry from the tank. If you do keep their older fry in the tank, they will chase these older fry away from their spawning site when they have a new brood. But I have noticed that these broods are smaller than when I remove all the older fry from the tank. This could be due to predation by the older fry or that the parents just don't lay as many eggs when they have older fry near their spawning site. With my six, a pair eventually formed and they became the dominant fish in the aquarium. They pushed the other four Regani to the sides of the tank and they first spawned with the four Regani still in the tank with them. I took those four Regani out of the aquarium and placed them into a four foot by two foot by two foot aquarium and my pair continued to spawn a number of times but they were very small spawns with the largest spawn having approximately 20 fry. The interesting thing with my pair of Regani is that they have accepted one of their very first fry to be near their subsequent spawns. All other fry are eventually kicked out of their territory when they are ready to spawn again. However, this one Regani has been accepted with them for some reason. I have had at least four to five spawns from this pair since that Regani was born, and it is the only one they continue to accept near them. As such, I have not sold that Regani off. This Regani assists its parents in raising their other spawns, and also chases other batches of fry away from their territory when its parents are ready to spawn. And as weird as this sounds, I am unsure if it has spawned with its parents yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if it does one day. I'm still unsure what sex it is, as it's still a juvenile, but if I was to guess, I would say it is a male due to females not tolerating other female Regani in the tank. I guess if it does end up spawning with its parents, then I will be able to further discuss this unusual spawning behaviour in future videos. Of the four Regani I ended up moving into my four foot aquarium, two then formed another pair and they also began spawning. They have successfully raised their fry in this tank, which is quite an achievement considering the amount of fish I have in this community tank. The interesting thing with this pair is that they were constantly bullied by the first pair. However, they are now larger than that first pair. That said, their spawn sizes are approximately the same size as my first pair. I have never seen the eggs with my pairs, but they are set to hatch after three days of spawning. At this stage, I recommend you target feed your fried baby brine shrimp and microworms with a syringe or turkey baster. Target feeding the fry just makes it a little easier for you to deliver the food directly to the location of your fry. For instance, if they have spawned in a terracotta pot and there is a hole as the entrance to the pot, you can insert the end of the syringe into the hole and slowly release the contents of the syringe into the pot. This maximises the amount of food reaching your fry and ensures that they are not expending too much energy to get to the food. Also, ensure you give your fish a wide range of foods just to make sure that they are getting all the vitamins and minerals that they need. Raising the fry is fairly easy and I've kept mine in the tank with the parents until the fry are approximately 2cm long. You will know when the parents want their fry gone because they will no longer tolerate them near their spawning site and they'll be constantly chasing them away. This is the time to pull the fry out of the parents tank. If you don't pull these older fry out then they will eat the new fry. Not saying this happens with origani, however that is what happens with mine. Some online sources state that the adults may spawn again whilst the brood are still in the aquarium and that they will form a nuclear family with the older fry remaining within the parents' territory. These fry are said to tend to the new brood of eggs, but this definitely doesn't happen with my pair. The fry aren't exactly fast growers, but they aren't the slowest and will take approximately five to six months for these guys to reach one inch. The interesting thing with the fry is that they seem to have vertical barring down the length of their body for a period of time. Only once they reach a size of over, say, approximately 1.5 centimeters, do the bars start to change into their horizontal barring. I am unsure why this is the case, but I suspect it may be a form of camouflage, a way to aid the fry to blend into their surroundings and break up their outline. That said, the fry I have in my four foot community tank 
aren't afraid to swim far away from their parents' rock pile and seem to be comfortable in avoiding the large fish in this aquarium. And once these guys are about an inch long, they are at a size suitable for selling to hobbyists and local fish stores. These guys are always in demand due to their striking appearance, interesting character and ease of breeding. If you are looking to try out a beautiful and rewarding Tanganyikan cichlid that is fairly easy to breed, I highly recommend that you give these guys a try. So there you have it guys, my in-depth species profile on Julidochromus regani. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons and even share the video if you can. I really would appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.